So, hi, I'm Sarah Gregson with the Job Gym Podcast. This is our first ever podcast, um, so we're going to give it a go and see how we get on. Uh, we offer lots of courses at the Job Gym, so we're going to cover a lot of different topics, everything from mental health to digital skills, from SAA to warehouse. We're going to talk about a lot. So we're going to give you a nice, tiny, bite-sized chunk about what our courses are about and who we are. That's what we're covering. So today, I'm going to introduce the lovely Katie Wilkinson, who's going to tell us a little bit more about her course with mental health. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Katie Wilkinson. I'm one of the tutors on the Mental Resilience Pathway, and I teach both Mental Health at Level 1 and Mental Health Level 2. Um, and today I'm going to speak to you about something that we probably all have experienced, um, or know somebody who's experienced, which is a mental health problem or a mental health crisis. Now, did you know, Sarah, that around one in four of us will suffer from a mental health problem at some point in our lives? No, I didn't know about that. So that's a high number. That's more than I thought. Yeah, it is. Mental health problems are more common than what a lot of people think. And it's really important that we are able to speak openly about them. And the reason for this is because there's quite a lot of stigma and discrimination around mental health. Um, and this has come from many, many years um, ago of things like the media mm -hmm. um, and their input into how people perceive mental health. Even things like movies can um, actually add yeah. to that stigma and discrimination. So it's really, really important that we're able to speak with one another openly about our mental health and this is how we reduce that stigma. So what I'm going to speak to you about today, Sarah, is actually how do we speak to somebody with, with a mental health problem? Yeah. Um, how can we react to them? How can we respond to them to make sure that it, you know they feel okay that, to be able to open up? So. The first thing that we should do if somebody is to speak to us about their mental health or a mental health crisis or problem they're experiencing is to not be judgmental. Mm -hmm. Even though we may not have experienced a mental health problem ourselves, it's really important that we don't judge that individual. They've decided to open up and speak to you for a reason. So it's really important that we keep open-minded about the situation. We need to also concentrate on immediate needs. If somebody has suffered a very severe mental health crisis, there is a chance that they may have tried to hurt themselves. So if this is the case, we need to make sure that we're contacting emergency services, such as paramedics or the ambulance service. Um, obviously, we do need to bear in mind here that we are putting ourselves at threat as well. Right. But if we are able to, we need to take care of the immediate needs of that individual. We also should ask what we can do to help the person. So what can I do to help you at this moment in time? And to be honest, Sarah, the person might not always have the answer. They might not always know, but sometimes they will. So perfect example, if somebody who suffers from anxiety, they begin to have an anxiety attack, start to suffer from a panic. Um, what we should do is ask them what can help. This individual might know that they need to go somewhere quiet, away from the, a crowd or away from people or into a safe place. If that person knows that, we can then take them to that area and help them through their attack. So really important, just simply to ask, what can we do so to we help? So we shouldn't be afraid to ask if somebody needs our help? No, not at all. Um, it's a very big responsibility to take on as an individual, but don't be scared. Do always bear in mind not to put yourself at any risk or to put the person at risk as well, but just don't be afraid to ask. Just asking could mean the world to that person and really make a difference to their life. So always ask what they need or what you can do to help them. The next thing that we need to do is be reassuring. If someone's telling us they're having a mental health crisis or they're suffering from a mental health problem, we need to reassure them that, you know, things can get better, things will get better, that they're not going to, you know, have the rest of their life like this. There is room for improvement. Um, and this improvement comes from treatment, from medication, um, even from just speaking to other people. So really important that we reassure the individual by saying things like, things will get better, you will be okay. What we also need to do is we need to have an idea of where we can tell people to go to get help. So for example, there's lots of information on the NHS website. We have amazing charities like the Samaritans, like Mind, um, which on their websites they have a ton of different information on how to support people suffering from a mental health illness. We can also avoid confrontation. Even though we might not understand the individual or the predicament that they're in or their illness that they're suffering from, we don't want to come across in a confrontational way. This would be saying things like, oh, you'll be fine, or why are you acting like this? 
that's really confrontational and that could scare the individual and it could actually scare them off from asking for help to help them with their illness so really important that we're acting very calm very collected and clear and we treat the individual with a lot of respect as well okay lastly i'd say what we need to do is encourage the person to seek help we should encourage the person to go to their doctors, book in with their GP. We should encourage them to speak to the amazing charities that are out there who offer support and advice. Unfortunately, we can't make the person do it, but if we offer encouraging words, um, they might take that step forward into getting help um, in regards to their mental health or their mental health problem. Um, I think that it's really important that we treat each other with respect and we understand that mental health is something that we all have um, we all need to take care of it um, and we need to understand that you know mental health problems anything from depression to anxiety um, you know are really quite common um, and let's all help each other so just a couple of tips there on how we can deal with somebody who may be suffering from a mental health problem so I hope you've learned something new today I do feel like I have I think it was really interesting so the main key is to not be judgmental mm -hmm. and reassure them yeah, and that's all we can do. So exactly, exactly, and that could go a long way. Um, I think with mental health, even simply smiling at somebody walking down the street, just asking somebody, "Are you okay?" Yeah, can make a you know a world of difference. It's nice to be nice. It is nice to be nice. <laughs> Thanks, Katie. That's brilliant. So I do have some questions. Yeah, go obviously ahead. you said that you are the tutor at the centre. Could you tell me a bit more about your course? Yeah, of, of course I can. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, mental health level one um, is basically it's a three day course. It's all about raising awareness of mental health. So this course would be really good for a beginner, somebody who yeah. may not have experience with mental health problems themselves, or is just wanting to sort of get into the field and learn more about it. So in that course, we cover things like how media can affect mental health uh, we look at how different cultures and how they react to mental health so a really really good course for a beginner uh, the mental health level two course we go into a little bit more detail um, and we actually look at how mental health um, works in the workplace we look at rights and responsibilities that individuals have when in a, when in a job and how their organization should be taking care of their mental well-being yeah. um, and we also look at how we can act as a mental health advocate which is what i've just been through with you there knowing these things and being able to advise people on their mental health is what we'd call somebody being an advocate so a really really uh, good course mental health level two for people who may already have a little bit of experience in the field um, but however, yeah, both really interesting courses um, if mental health is something you are wanting to know more about. Thanks for that, Katie. That was really interesting. No problem. So, oh, I do have one more question. You're obviously very passionate about your subject. Why did you choose to go into mental health? Um, I've always wanted to, well, I've already ha always had a passion in regards to how the brain works and why people behave that the way they do. Um, so I actually have a degree in, in counselling studies. Now, when COVID hit, I unfortunately found myself without a job and I was actually claiming job seekers myself. Um, I got offered to do some uh, free courses by the job centre here at Mantra and I thought, why not? <laughs> um, and so I actually went on to do the uh, Mental Health Resilience Pathway, which is Mental Health Level 1, Mental Health Level 2 and Wellbeing Level 1. Um, and I found myself teaching here at Mantra and I absolutely love it. Um, it's, it's a really, really great place to come and do the courses. Um, you're supported by all the tutors um, and you know, you, you're getting a qualification out of it at the end of the day. It's something you can put on your CV. And especially with the mental health courses, um, organisations and companies are crying out for people who are able to be a mental health advocate in their workplace. Um, so having these qualifications on your CV is going to put you in really, really good stead when job searching. Um, so yeah, I couldn't recommend the courses at Mantra anymore. Not just saying that because I work here, but also because I've been at the other end of it as well and I've done the courses myself. Um, so yeah, 100%, if you are interested in getting into the mental health field, this would be a really good place to start. Thanks for that, Katie. That was really interesting. Thank you. So, obviously, as Katie said, there is lots of different courses going on at the Job Gym. You can contact us whenever you wish to find out more information about the courses. We do also have several social media accounts with Facebook and Instagram. So if you want to just pop a little search in there, you can find us. Also, you can give us a call on 0845 543 6996 and just register your interest. Thanks. <laughs>